In this video, I'm going over UEFI and UEFI only. I'm gonna make this very short and condensed and actually go over some of the misconceptions just so people have a better understanding of what UEFI is and what it's capable of and how to actually use it. So the first thing I want to address, I actually did a video, I'm gonna link it up here in the title card and also probably in the description below. But uh, I went over UEFI versus uh, legacy BIOS and then I also did a difference between GPT and MBR drives. So that is a mouthful and I look, it's probably one of my lowest retention videos just because people look at it and there's so many technical terms that you just get lost. So I looked over all other YouTubers to see exactly who else has made videos on UEFI. And most of them uh, haven't done a very good job of explaining UEFI or what it is. So I wanted to kind of break it down because there's really three parts to UEFI that I kind of want to explain. The very first part I want to explain is the BIOS in your computer. When you first boot up and you go into that shiny screen or it's old DOS blue screen, whatever it might be, that is UEFI or a legacy BIOS. So that's just the BIOS though, UEFI and legacy BIOS. And newer ones have, you know, mouse control and all that. When it has a mouse, you know it's UEFI. When it has really advanced graphics, you know it's UEFI. I bring this up because it's important to know, hey, usually any computer bought in the last five years has that. And that is one difference between UEFI BIOS and legacy BIOS. So that's just the BIOS though. So then you need to actually boot into an environment to install an actual operating system. To install UEFI, you have to boot from a UEFI enabled USB drive. Now, almost every installation media out there has the capabilities of doing both legacy and UEFI. You gotta make sure you force your system to boot into UEFI. If you don't and you install that operating system, it will be installed as a legacy BIOS operating system, which means it won't be UEFI enabled. So having said that, a great way to test before actually installing the operating system, if you can drop to shell, if you're doing a Linux install, um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut over to shell on here and I'm gonna show you a couple commands. So here is two methods of checking to see if you've actually booted into UEFI and it's super important to do before you try doing any kind of grub installation or any bootloader installation in a Linux install. So from your command prompt, you will simply just list ls space and then type in this path. It should return results. Now, if you're not booted into UEFI, when you do this, it'll just say no files found or it'll just be blank. So very important to know. One other thing I really like to do as well is install something called EFI boot manager or MGR. So how that looks is uh, just do a sudo command. You have to be super easy to use it and type EFI boot manager after you've installed this particular package right here. So either apt get it or you know, whatever distribution you're on, you need to install that package. And from here, you'll actually see, hey, I have uh, Manjaro, that's this drive, and I also have another UEFI hard drive that I can boot to. Uh, I apparently did not label that. But as you see, Manjaro is the first in the boot order and that other drive is the second in the bootloader. Now, the cool thing about this is UEFI allows you to actually dictate the boot order directly here. So using this EFI boot manager, I believe I can actually change the actual uh, order that you're going in. So very, very powerful stuff. Definitely remember these two commands or write them down when doing UEFI. So those were the commands actually to determine if you booted into UEFI. This is extremely important before doing the full installation, just to know that you forced your computer to use UEFI. I highly recommend in BIOS settings, disabling any legacy BIOS and forcing UEFI before starting any operating system installation. This makes sure that operating system is installed in UEFI mode. When it comes to Windows, it's much more guesswork going on as you gotta make sure you're booting UEFI Windows installation media and there's no real good way to check or at least not that I know of. 
So having said that, you booted and installed your operating system. Now, when you install it and you get to the bootloader portion of it, when it does its bootloader, it will install by default an EFI or a UEFI capable bootloader, which is great. This can be done on any kind of disk. And that is UEFI in a nutshell. But one more thing I wanted to address is large drive support. Can you have a large drive on an old legacy BIOS installation? And the answer to this is a resounding yes. So almost every computer, like I said, I started out the video and said every computer in the last five years has UEFI and legacy capabilities. Well, that means they do have the capability of recognizing large drives. So I wanted to show these YouTube videos to kind of go over this because it's really important. So I grabbed the top four videos on YouTube. This is about a minute, 30 seconds long, and I go over four videos and I just pull snippets from each one that has UEFI on YouTube. And kind of you can see where all this confusion comes from. Now, all these YouTubers aren't necessarily wrong, but they're not right either. I want to just make sure the one thing that you pick up from these videos and you should be listening for is, is the drive GPT? If the YouTuber does not tell you that, it says, hey, if you need a large drive, you need UEFI. That's not true. UEFI on old systems makes sure it has the capabilities, but it doesn't necessarily have to be installed as UEFI. So confusing. You can do legacy and then do a GPT disk and that disk could be six terabytes and it will still read it and it will still boot from it. Um, you just got to make sure the operating system supports booting from GPT. Uh, so that's just the disk drives and it's very important to know. But I'm going to go ahead and roll this one minute, 30 second clip. UEFI can also recognize larger storage drives it's a firmware that can boot from hard drives of 2.2 terabytes or larger due to using a GPT partition instead of the MBR. The system that a conventional BIOS uses to access your hard drive or SSD called the Master Boot Record or MBR could only handle partitions less than two terabytes. And that was fine for a long time, but with many modern hard drives holding way more data, it became obvious that something new was needed. The Unified Extensible Firmware Interface or UEFI, which no one can agree how to pronounce, was born. The benefits to UEFI is you get advanced graphics for like, let's say your bootloader wants to do a fancy background and have icons for each one of uh, your boot drives. You can easily set that up in a UEFI. And also there's greater support for large boot drives. Now in that same vein, you'll probably want to use GPT. And what that means is that's the partition table. So when you first plug in your drive, you'll get a prompt that says, hey, do you want GPT or MBR? You'll get those prompts. And if it's a large drive, it needs to be GPT. Otherwise, the largest partition you can make is two terabytes. So that was the clip. And I have to say, it's, it's one, looking back, you know, I did that video two months ago, which is kind of funny, but it's, some really good content in there, but it's very easy to talk in circles when it comes to talking about UEFI and GPT versus MBR. Just remember UEFI and legacy boot. UEFI is controlled one at the BIOS level. Is it UEFI compatible? Almost all new ones are. And then when you go to the installation media, is it booted into legacy boot or UEFI? And then when you install the operating system, it is dictated by that second layer. And then the operating system's bootloader, when it gets installed, will be under UEFI or a legacy boot kind of thing. So just very, very important to know. And then as far as large drive support, just know anything over two terabytes, you're gonna have to load GPT on it if you want to do a big partition on that drive. Um, otherwise, you can use MBR and just carve it up in the two terabyte segments. However, uh, that's just hard drives. It has nothing to do with UEFI and legacy boot. As all these YouTubers have said, even myself, 
said that, and it can be kind of confusing, and I wanted to just make sure to stipulate GPT is the one that controls the size that that drive can go to. But having said all that, I think this should give you a lot better clarity of how to actually utilize UEFI and the reasons why you'd want to. So uh, just, just know UEFI is mainly uh, for those out there that want to have a graphical interface for their BIOS where you can put a nice background and it also increases, uh, it actually decreases boot time. Those are really the main benefits is a little more flair, a little more eye candy, and then also a faster boot. But there's really no other reason to do UEFI. You can do legacy on a big drive and most of the videos out there kind of make it seem like you can't. I think in the beginning of my video, I said, hey, these are just kind of guidelines, not necessarily rules you can't break. And uh, I wanted to just make sure that you guys understand that because it's something that is easily lost in the shuffle and most people get confused on. That's going to do it for today's video, guys. Please let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below. And if you like this video, consider visiting me on Patreon. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.